We spun the wheel to pick us a team. We then got sacked from that team. So we spun the wheel again and took over Wolves in the Premier League. And I made the joke that we took over Portugal. You all laughed and that's why you need to subscribe. We really struggled for goals and drew a lot of games nil-nil. But we changed the tactic a lot and started scoring. Kind of, kind of not. We were kind of forced to sell Ruben Neves and Adama Traore who had six months left on their contract. And we brought in Caleb Bacoli at centre-back and Gagliardini in midfield. And with £18 million left, we have money to strengthen. But we will not be the ones who decide who we sign. Because the wheel is returning and this time round it will decide our transfers, starting off with the position. Hopefully it's a player that can take us into the top half of the league. Again, we have only scored 19 goals in 21 games. And Haaland has scored 5 more by himself. <laughs> Come on then wheel, give us something we need. And it's a striker that's actually spot on. Because I'd say Jimenez is the best out-and-out -out striker that we actually have. But his long-term plans are to leave anyway. So what age range is this striker going to be in? And it's prime age of 26 to 30. Also, it's the most expensive. So let's see who I think we could target. A perfect player would be Dembele, but he's currently out injured for three months, which is annoying. So I might need to build up a bigger budget, so I'm offering out Jimenez. He offers coming in, but it's all a lot lower than his actual value. But just like that, I sold Jimenez to Sporting for £23 million. And now we have £37 million in total. And while my bid for his replacement is happening behind the scenes, we go behind against Liverpool in the FA Cup. But it wasn't long after, later, when we equalised. And then Johnny cut inside from the left wing and nailed one right into the top corner. And to cap it off, we play Guidez in to make it three and knock Liverpool out of the FA Cup. Although we can't catch a break in this cup draw because Liverpool first and then it's Man City next. But here is our new number nine, Ivan Tony, within the age range selected by the wheel and a quality striker, but is he better than Jimenez? Well, I actually think Football Manager have had a stinker here because Jimenez looks better across a lot of attributes, which, to be honest, I really don't agree with after watching both players in the last couple of seasons. I know Jimenez picked up a bad injury, but I don't know. What's your opinion? Because I actually think these attributes are wrong. After two duds for Tony and two straight defeats, Ivan Tony finally got himself on the score sheet from a free kick. He then was found by a wonderful midfield through ball to use his pace and fantastic finishing, and he even played a part in the third in the 3-1 win against Bournemouth. Great time to pick up his form when former team Brentford are next and City to follow. Although he didn't score against Brentford, Tony played a huge part in the opening goal, setting up Nunez as header. And this game, we only score worldies when Gagliardini's over-the-top pass found Guidez for the volley. 2-0 win. But it hasn't gone as smoothly as we hoped after four straight defeats. And we also haven't scored in three games either. And no surprise, our job is now insecure. And I think the fans are also ready for us to get the boot as well. So the game against Chelsea is crucial. And thanks to some shocking defensive of mistakes by Chelsea, Ivan Tony gave us the lead. But Chelsea then came back at us and equalised through Jorginho's shot. But once again, Tony plays a big part and Nathan Collins gets on the end of his header 2-1 Wolves. But our hearts were broken in the 89th minute when Kukurea scored to make it 2-2, taking two very crucial points from Wolves. Brighton next and we seriously needed a win, but it was the Seagulls who drew blood first through Argentine midfielder McAllister. Second half and with our backs against the wall, Moutinho found Ivan Tony, just who we needed to equalise. And the next goal was always going to be the crucial one and thankfully it was the provider turned goal scorer, Moutinho who found the net with an assist from Pedro Neto. This game was not over though and in stoppage time a goal was inevitable. Thankfully, though, it was a goal from Wolves, and we secured all three points. That win jumped us up to 13th with three games in hand on United, who are still only in 12th place somehow. Oh, and Haaland has 37 goals. And look where we are playing next, at the Etihad. I will love it if we beat them. Love it. We have also changed the tactics slightly and gone for a more 3-4-3 look with two number 10s. Unfortunately, though, our goalkeeper couldn't keep out Haaland's penalty. However, after a fantastic build-up play, Pedro Neto was found in the 84th minute to fire home. But it seemed to be offside and it was disallowed and we lose 1-0. But it can't get any worse than playing Man City in the Premier League though, can it? Well, our next games are Arsenal, Liverpool away, Palace, West Ham and then Tottenham. 
My eyes are bleached. Hey, we brought back the nil nils against Arsenal. I will take that one. Things at Anfield didn't start great though and Jean Mario scored a penalty. But honestly, the second goal, we are just simply our own worst enemy. Terrible defending and Nunez scores. And now our best defender, Kilman, is injured for about two to three weeks. Crystal Palace are 18th. That's four places below us right now, but within 44 minutes, they put in a penalty and we find ourselves 2-0 down. So Super Sub Kalatsic came on to save the day to score on the 73rd minute and from a corner on the 76th. And all of a sudden, I'm thinking we need to play him more. I am a genius, I know. So we literally have nothing to lose now. Let's go two up top and try to survive the relegation scrap we might put ourselves in. But the board are like, nah, you're still going to lose. Now, Brentford manager Thomas Frank claims that he has never seen Ivan Tony miss a penalty. Yeah, Thomas, well, I have. I don't really want to talk about it, but Lanzini popping in a free kick into the top corner can also get in the bin. And you know you're doomed when Jose Sa is letting Flynn down score a goal. And then he assists Paqueta, who also seems to have Jose Sa's nudes on his phone. What is going on? I don't know how, but we're still only 14th position, despite not winning in the last five games. Now I might be ranting a bit now, but what the hell is this? And how can you read this and understand what is going on? Also, while I'm ranting, I can't ignore the fact that FM have delayed the PS5 release. If you have ordered a PS5 copy, by the way, of FM, you should get refunded. Which actually doesn't give me much hope for the game actually coming out on PS5 because if you were just going to delay it a couple of weeks, why would you refund everybody? And I think, to be honest, FM's dropped a huge ball with this and this whole release with the lack of headline features, now it, it just doesn't feel great. I still think it's worth upgrading to FM23 if you can afford to. I think the match engine animation changes are great and I love the idea of defensive tactics working. I just honestly feel like something wasn't finished in time. It feels like we are one big headline feature short, whether that is the set pieces, but that's just my guess. Anyway, back to the football and Gagladini is now out injured for the rest of the season. But that's not going to stop us from taking the lead through Guides in the 12th minute. And everything is sunshine and rainbows when his wonderful pass by Johnny finds Ivan Tony to score a second. And we are 2-0 up. How long will that last, Luke? I hear you ask. 10 minutes is my answer because Hyo Ming Son makes it 2-1. And from a Hugo Lloris assist, Harry Kane makes it 2-2. And once again, we draw a game of football. I know he gets himself injured and I'm starting to wonder whether I'm going to have to get my boots dusted off myself. It was a derby next and I think the players have really given up playing for me. I feel like I'm at Ralph Ranick levels of what's the point. Final game of the season and it's at home to Southampton. Jao Moutinho is 36 years old and can still hit them. 1-0. He can also take a corner and Kaladzic is really tall and it's 2-0. Bella Kotchap also scored from a corner and made it 2-1. Thankfully though, Semedo played through Guides and made it 3-1 rather late on. Just not late enough to stop Bella Kotchap from scoring a second. I have not enjoyed my time at Getafe or Wolves. And we are the 11th highest scorer in the league, only getting 39 goals this season. And Erlen Haaland scored 42 all by himself. I never want to see another spinning wheel again. And I'm resigning from Wolves before they sack me. Make sure you do subscribe though, because next week when the full game is actually released, we'll have a lot more fun videos when that game launches and a lot more interesting stuff like the one here when we used Liverpool rebuilding them for five years with a low block. It's defensive tactics. They're not used to it. It's funny.